Wait, so are the women the farm animals or the men? I don't think these are even the right graphs for this paper. People always say, do your own research. But what does that look like? I think this might be a good opportunity to talk about assessing research publication quality. What could go wrong? There I was, minding my own business, reading the women's scent preferences and menstrual cycle section of the Wikipedia order page. My eyebrows were raised for most of it, but nearly launched into orbit when I read, other scents found to be preferred by women in the most fertile phase of their cycle are the scent for developmental stability and the scent for dominance. <laughs> Go on. So I clicked through to the paper. Let's start with the title of this paper. Women's preference for dominant male odor. Effect of <laughs> effects of menstrual cycle and relationship status. I already have questions. How do you define a dominant male odor? What kind of control did you have? Like, did it include female or other odors too? No odor? Is relationship status a proxy for a sexual activity or a lonely mental state or... So the whole article is on the NIH National Library of Medicine. Great. But let's not skip past the banner. As a library, NLM provides access to scientific literature. Inclusion in an NLM database does not imply endorsement of or agreement with the context by NLM or National Institute of Health. Noted. Let's take a quick look where this study was published. This paper was published in the Royal Society's Biology Letters, Volume 1, Issue 3. My first question is, what is the payment structure for this journal? Like, is it pay to publish? It's a hybrid open access journal, so no red flags there exactly. The Royal Society generally seems fairly reasonably well raked for impact factor. These signals are positive-ish, but kind of inconclusive for the journal quality. Okay, let's take a look at the paper. 48 male students aged between 19 and 27 were asked to complete an 11 item questionnaire on dominance and to wear cotton pads in their armpits for 24 hours. I pulled up the quiz, or at least I did my best because the paper they cited didn't have an IPIP called dominance, but it seems to be this assertiveness one here. Let's take the quiz together for science. Dominant traits. Automatically take charge. Can easily push myself forward. Turns plans into actions. Non-dominant traits. Let myself be pushed around. I'm not highly motivated to succeed. Need a lot of time to do things. Yeah, these definitely seem like the kinds of strengths and failings 48 19 to 27 year old male students are going to be completely honest about. So notably in the method section, they have split the females into a group of 30 in their follicular phase of their menstrual cycle, and 35 in other phases. This is the only one split explicitly mentioned in the method section, and both splits go through the same methodology, so let's put a pin in that. The women rated the odor of 10 pads for their intensity, sexiness, and masculinity using a 7-point scale. They found a positive correlation between male psychological dominance and odor sexiness from women in their follicular phase, but not the other phases. So I scrolled to figure 1 to inspect, and Wait, so are the women the farm animals or the men? I don't think these are even the right graphs for this paper. So PubMed has the wrong graphs for some reason? So I had to go to the Royal Society and give them my hard earned 2550 for the privilege of reading this clearly incredibly high caliber paper. I certainly didn't use Sci-Hub, as that would be completely illegal, unconscionable way of bypassing journal paywalls. I, I would never. So here's the real chart. And what is even going on here? There is now single and non-single multi-hypothesis testing. Going back to the results, subsequently, we tested separately the women who reported to be single and those who were in this heterosexual romantic relationship. So we're going to pull out our previous pen because there was no such split mentioned in the methodology. We don't even know how many women are in each subsplit anymore as they don't give the relationship split numbers. It kind of seems like this relationship status split came out of nowhere. On a completely unrelated note, let's talk about the concept of p-hacking. Good science form has you pick a hypothesis, test it, and move on. I mentioned this paper is engaging in multi-hypothesis testing, which is not great for reasons illustrated pretty well in the Jellybean XKCD comic. Similar to the jelly bean colors, if you slice your data by enough variables, like age, grades, sexual activity, sexuality, heterosexual romantic relationships, you'll eventually find some slice for which you get an erroneously significant p-value. This post-experiment data slicing is called p-hacking, and is bad for scientific integrity, but great for just really churning out papers. But these findings won't be reproducible. For more details on p-values, etc., check out this StatQuest video on p-hacking. But if you have auto-generated subtitles on, you will get p-hacking instead, so beware. Was this p-hacking? Who can say? Just a 
bit strange. The split wasn't mentioned until the results section is all. The other finding is that there's actually a negative correlation between male dominance and intensity of body odor. I guess alpha males have weak scent glands. This wasn't in the abstract, but I appreciate the publication of negative results. Usually. Except I used Automeris to extract the graph data, and oh no, it's gone. The statistically significant correlation, it's gone. The discussion section gets pretty spicy. There is also evidence that males of high genetic quality have a tendency for low parental investment. In response, a mixed mating strategy may have evolved in females. They prefer genetically superior males as short-term or extra-pair sexual partners, while at the same time, they seek males who are more willing to invest in their offspring as long-term or social partners. This interpretation is consistent with our findings that women in stable relationships have a strong tendency to prefer the smell of dominant men when in the fertile phase of their cycle. Motherfucker, you did not get a strong tendency. There was nothing strong about it. I rate this paper 3 out of 10 sweaty masculine armpits. You felt this moment coming for nearly 5 minutes now. You felt the tingling anticipation in all your nerves. Well, here you go. This paper just doesn't pass the smell test.